annual passes are back for everyone, and the rush was on. There's news about new DVC properties, and new decorations hit Walt Disney World as Disney ramps up for the celebration of their 100th anniversary. And we'll review our lunch at Garden Grill in Epcot, all on episode 138 of the Mickey File Podcast. Welcome back, everyone. It's episode 138 of the Mickey File Podcast. I am Scott, and with me, as always, is my lovely wife, Karen. Hello, everybody. Annual passes are back, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's been a day. <laughs> it's like the biggest deal ever that I honestly couldn't care less about. <laughs> Not that I couldn't care less. Like, I just had, like, yeah, whatever. Well, I know, but a lot of our friends got them. Biggest deal ever that didn't affect me one bit. But right. yes, it affected our friends. So. Yes, it did affect our friends. Very stressful day. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a good day, though. Very good day. Yeah, it is. It is a very good day. Yes, it is. So we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. We did go to Disney. We did. Last weekend. Uh -huh. Saturday. Saturday. So, for a little bit, I think, I don't know. Oh. We were gone like six hours, maybe so. seven yeah. round trip. Yeah. So, we didn't do a lot, but we did a little bit. Yeah, enough to, yeah. you know. We got to see uh, Travis. Travis and Natalie, Natalie Boyle and Marissa Mars. Yep. We had fun, had fun hanging so, out with them for a little bit. Yeah, probably longer than we feel like we stood there. I know. Blocking, talk to him, blocking, blocking the uh, merchandise racks at uh, <laughs> the Odyssey or whatever it's called there. That is what it's called. So it was fun. Good to see them. I know it was. It's uh, one week from today uh, until one, the unofficial kickoff. Yeah, one week from today. We'll be getting ready to go to Wine Bar George. Uh, yeah, yes, we will. Uh-huh. So... That's cool. Uh, I was going to say we've never been there, but we had breakfast there. Yes. With, uh, Tony Ann and Michael. Yes, we did. And met George. We did meet George. Yeah, so that'll be fun. And then mm -hmm. Friday is, I don't even remember, Animal, and the treehouse. Animal Kingdom and the treehouse. There we go. Animal Kingdom and the treehouse. <laughs> I'm very confused because Animal Kingdom is always on Thursday and I miss it. Yes, you generally so do. So I'm mm -hmm. like off a day. Right. But um, yeah, so all of the uh, TDC 23, 2023 Grand Fiesta <laughs> is uh, a week from today. I know. So we'll be there for that. Yes. You'll be there for all of it. I'll be there for some of it. Yeah. For most of it, a big chunk of it. Yeah. Yeah. A little over half of it anyway. Yeah. Um, no real housekeeping or anything that we, I am currently aware of. How are we doing in Trinidad and Tobago? Uh, we dropped, a th it's weird. We were second a few days ago, but now we've dropped a 30th. So. Uh, yeah. Well, that's a bummer. It's bouncing around. <laughs> Come on, guys. Come on. We want to get back up to number two. <laughs> It's so weird. It's, it's just so weird. random. It's not weird. It's just so random. It's funny. I know. That's why I saw you look it up, but I couldn't resist. So. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, that's, I think, all we got for the, you know, preliminaries. So okay. why don't we start the news? All right. As we mentioned, Walt Disney World annual pass sales opened after 6 a.m. this morning on Thursday April 20th. Apparently way after? Um, well, yes. So, I was on before 6, and it was on this Space Mountain, you know, little flying around in orbit. And it says press here. Well, I didn't refresh it and didn't press there. So, at apparently 645 is when it went live. And at 650, I got in the queue 
And I was more than an hour for way longer than an hour. And so that's when it opened. So yeah, I mean, it probably took you... Uh, it was over six hours. That's what I was going to say. I know. It was over six hours. I don't remember when you sent me the text. Let's see. Yeah, sometime around noon. Yeah. So about five hours. Yeah, about five hours. It's a long time. It is a long time. But then once it got, it started counting the number of minutes, that went pretty quick. Because it went from 58 to 53. I mean, that jumped quickly. So it was definitely once it started counting down under 59 minutes, it did not take an hour. So that was good. Yeah. I don't understand it. No. And then they paused for a while too. They paused for like so 30 minutes. Right. Because they. I think they were trying to clean out the queue and let it, let it probably, refill again. Yeah. But it's weird to me. I know it's not apples to apples. Mm -hmm. But like, I've never had to go to a virtual queue to buy something from Amazon. Yeah, I know. Right? Like, and there's people all over the world 24 hours a day buying stuff. Well, in fairness, it was four things you could buy. That was it. Tech, well, hold on. Yes. No, I understand that. Right. What I'm saying is, like, other companies manage to, hey, it's for sale until it sells out. Right. Not virtual queue and wait six hours on a website. I don't get it. I don't know. I don't know what their deal is. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's for everything. Everything. Every, every event. You know. Um, but it got done for the the ones I was working on, got it done. That's what mattered. Right. So we have three very happy friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Good for everybody. Mm -hmm. And then I saw, I think all the others that were wanted it, got it. Of, our, of all of our group. Um, I mean, yeah, well, they haven't sold out yet. Right. right. So at 2.30. Yeah, and the sign is still up. 2.38, yeah. They put out a thing that, whatever, what's it say here? I'm, I'm getting it. We thank you and all our fans for the incredible enthusiasm for the pass holder program. Due to high popularity of our annual passes, please no wait times may exceed several hours. And this was at 2.28, so they've already been for sale for practically speaking eight hours at this point right and now they're telling you it could be hours that you might wait several hours so that's ridiculous uh we anticipate a pass or select passes may become available unavailable for purchase later today continue to check here for updates mm -hmm. so if you haven't you uh better get them now because they're already telling you they're gonna stop right and right now it one is one or more more than an hour in the queue. And based on where it's at, it's probably going to be two hours. Right. Right. At least. So. So, anyway. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, people, yeah. people have got passes again. Mm-hmm. I bet you that nobody lets them expire next time. <laughs> <laughs> Your my prediction. That is my prediction as well. Maybe not nobody, but but there are people. Nobody. Yeah, a majority of people are not going to let them expire again. Yeah. Right. Um. Yeah. So anyway, passes are back. Passes are back for now. Mm -hmm. Two day Typhoon Lagoon water park tickets are available to Florida residents for the price of a one day ticket. They have two different ticket options available. One is April 18th through June 30th. 
It's $69 for adults, $63 for kids. Second option is April 18th through May 27th, and that's $64 for adults and $58 for kids. Typhoon Lagoon tickets are way less than I thought they were, apparently. Yes. yes. Well, that's cool. I know. It's kind of neat. I mean, that's... 30. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 35 bucks a day, 32 bucks a day. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's cool. That's a cool deal for locals. Mm hmm. Yeah. I thought so. You know, we were talking last night about how many people go to theme parks, right? Right. So, like, as of 2021, Magic Kingdom was the biggest one in the world. Right. Which it is like every year. Um, but Universal Islands of Adventure and Universal Orlando are two and three. There's a separate category for water parks. Oh. And Volcano Bay in Orlando is the only U.S. water park in the top, I think it was 25. Oh. It may have been 30. So I know they have to have them because right. everybody has them. Right. But um, the Disney water parks are underutilized. Let's it, say that. Yes. For having two of them especially, which, I mean, I don't know. When's the last time they were both open? But Yeah, I don't think they're. Yeah. Because I think they alternate. Like one's open and then the other's open. Well, they didn't used to. Oh. That's what they've been doing now. It, it feels like. But right. Yeah. Um, I mean, they used to both be open. They just aren't now. Right. So, anyway. Okay. So, the Disney 100 medals have been revealed for the Run Disney Virtual Series. Um, it's going to include a Steamboat Willy Mickey medal. Right. A Sorcerer Mickey medal, a Runaway Railway Mickey, and a Disney 100 Mickey and Minnie for the challenge. So that's 3K, 5K, 10K? No, they're all 5Ks. It's like the virtual one we oh, did. Oh, the virtual. Three, yeah. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Where it's three different 5Ks, and if you do all three, you get the other one. Right. Which there's some pretty, especially the Sorcerer one, I might sign up for those. Yeah, that seems very cool. Yeah, medals look very cool, and they have amazing medals. So, yeah, their medals are not right, cheap, except for the Castaway Key five K. But there's no entry fee for that, and it's fun and all that. Right. So, and I think that one may open next week. For that oh, side, yeah, up. for the virtual, yeah. Platinum Disney one hundred decorative signs arrive at Disney Springs and at the entrance to Animal Kingdom. So they're pretty much the same ones that are at Magic, Just setting them up at all. Yeah, and I saw the picture at Animal Kingdom. So were there big 50th signs at Animal Kingdom and Disney Springs? No. I mean, I know the 100's a big deal. It's a big deal. It is a big deal. But, yeah, no, there weren't 50th ones at. There was just like 50th banners and stuff all around, but they didn't have a big 50th. Yeah. So... Actually, our little chat group, the sign came up a little bit ago. Yeah. I stand by my position that the sign is appropriate at, for Hollywood Studios and maybe Epcot based on its design. And I can even at that point understand why it's at Magic Kingdom. Mm hmm But it, does, it looks horrible in front of Animal Kingdom. Yeah. Like, Animal Kingdom is just not it, that style. No. You know? Yeah. it's It needs to be all Animal Kingdom. Appropriate. <laughs> yeah. So, they're going to make me change my mind about the sign that I liked. I know. And I do like the sign. In the appropriate context. Right. The design of the sign, I like. Yeah. Yeah. But... 
I mean, it's cool. Yeah. It's 100 years for the It's 100 company. years. It's a big deal. It is. And it, it should be a big deal. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I know there are other com- companies that are 100 years older. Right. Or, or, or older, you know. Right. General Electric and what have you. But, but it's a big deal. Yes, it is. None that have had more of a cultural influence on the U.S. and the world right. than, than Disney. Right. Um, Space Mountain exit through Tomorrowland Launch Depot is finally open at Magic so they finally got you going through the gift shop again, huh? Exactly. <laughs> Which is, uh, I think it's mostly Tron stuff. Uh, it was, for sure. Yeah. but And yeah. that's where the, uh, whatever, the identity disc or whatever yes. thing is. Yes. Yeah. You know, I'm surprised that Guardians just has you exit by the gift shop. I know. That's like a... I mean, you're all hyped up. You want to get stuff. I mean, the staple has always been, please exit through the gift shop. Right. There's a, uh, I think it's Mennonite restaurant in Sarasota. Okay. You go in and come out through the gift shop. (laughs) 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 Like, they're no fools. Well, isn't that like Cracker Barrel? Well, yeah, Cracker Barrel does it too. Yeah. But the Mennonite place has fresh pies sitting like right there by the <laughs> entrance to the actual restaurant. You can never go wrong with a fresh pie. They are, they are not fooling around. <laughs> Nothing wrong with pie. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you can just smell it's like just out of the oven. Right. So. Anyway. And. Shocking, we were talking about yesterday, halfway to Halloween. Shocking, they announced the dates of the Halloween parties. <laughs> yeah. We knew it was coming. It's always like well, the next it's day. Because always, it's always this week. They've, you know, in the last few years, they've made a big deal about halfway to Halloween. And then, right. And then the Halloween and here party. are your dates, get them now. Right. Which actually, I think, what is it? April 27th? Is that what uh, I, saw? I believe April 27th, if you're. On property, if you're staying on property. Right. And the parties, the first party is August 11th, which is a Friday. Yeah. And then a full on calendar. Oh, yeah. And the prices pretty much stayed the same as last year. Yeah, that's what you said. Yeah. So from August 11th through back to November 1st, because Halloween is... Last year they ended it on Halloween because it right. was what a Monday. Yeah, I think so. Um, it's funny the website does not make it very obvious as far as when. What's the pricing you mean? When tickets go on sale, oh. I feel like the Friday, August eleventh, twenty twenty three, for one hundred forty nine dollars. I feel like that is higher than it was last year for the first party. I know the first party is always it's always a little bit more expensive, but I thought it was only like one thirty nine. One thirty nine. I think it's like a dollar I think it's like ten dollars higher. So basically the August parties except the first are hundred and nine. The September ones are hundred and nineteen. Well, the first few in September, first half. September nineteenth, they jumped to one forty nine. October third, they jumped to one sixty nine. Mm-hmm. Friday, October 6th is $189, and then it goes back to $169, so I don't know. Oh, oh all the Fridays in October. Friday, they become yeah. $189 on Fridays. Yeah, Fridays. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And the last three, 29th, 31st, and the first are $199. Hmm. So this says that the Halloween party is 7 to midnight. Right. It can be as... Admitted as early as 4 p.m. on the valid date of your ticket. Okay. Annual pass holders and Disney Vacation Club members get $10 off per ticket valid right. for select event nights. Right. So based on past experience, that first party, the Halloween party, 
are going to sell out pretty quick. Right. I am surprised. Like, there ended up being, if I remember right, maybe I'm thinking about Christmas. Mm-hmm. But I feel like the Halloween party, like, I know Christmas did. I felt like the Halloween party, like, pretty much all sold out. Yes, they did. So I'm surprised they didn't jack the prices up more. That's why I was really surprised that the prices were remain pretty much the same. Maybe they're just going to, like, double the amount of people in them. I hope not. Yeah, I hope not. Yeah, I know. I'm just, I'm surprised that they didn't go up more. Yeah, I expected them to go up more, to be very honest. I didn't want them to go up more. I'm no, just I just expected them to, yeah. $99... There's five parties that are $99 for kids mm-hmm. in August. Yeah. Up to $189 for the last three parties. Right. It's only $10 cheaper. That's all it is for mm. kids the whole time. Yeah, party tickets are on sale as early as April 27th. Oh, there it is. The regular guests begin May 2nd. Yeah, people staying in... Uh, Guests of select Walt Disney World Resort hotels can begin purchasing as early as April 27th. All other guests may purchase tickets beginning May 2nd. Right. So. There we go. uh, The advanced purchase window is available to guests of Walt uh, Disney Resort hotels, the Swan, Swan Reserve, the Dolphin, and Shades of Green. So that's it. None of the quote unquote good neighbor hotels. Right. So get our tickets when we can. Mhm. That's the regular news. It is the so regular news. There's some exciting DVC news that just came out. Yeah, I, th- I think it is. No, it is. I mean, yeah. it is. Depending on how they do it. DVC sales for the Villas at Disneyland Hotel will open for existing members on May 2nd and then everyone else on May 30th. Right. I don't, I haven't seen a price yet. I don't think I haven't seen a price and there may be one out there. I didn't look because I knew it was going to be expensive. Yeah. I just wonder if they've gotten to 200 yet. Uh, Oh, it's over 200. Oh, right. Sorry. I wonder if they got to 300 yet. Uh, DVC points chart has been released for the Villas at Disneyland Hotel. Uh, There will be a duo studio, deluxe studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, and garden room. Mm -hmm. Uh, Then this afternoon, all of a sudden there's stuff on the internet. That the cabins at Fort Wilderness are being changed over to be in DVC properties. Yes. So that's cool. Mm-hmm. They're going to be, from what I saw from Scott Gustin, who is usually pretty accurate. Yes. About everything. Um, they will sleep six. Yes, that's what I saw as well. Is what it says. So Scott Gustin tweeted out, new Disney Vacation Club is announcing plans to bring refreshed cabin hideaways to Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground. Proposed plans call for more than 350 new cabins to replace the existing cabins at the resort. Uh, And then they came out and said that these are going to be DVC. Yes. So very interesting. Yeah, they're going to make them much more light and airy. Sure. Sleeping up to six adults and feature a bedroom, bathroom, living room, full kitchen, and private patio. Which they basically do now. Right. Um, so you're... Right, so like right now they're all deluxe resorts, right? So you've got like Animal Kingdom that has like super dining, right? Right. Or you've got 
um, the Turf Club or Olivia's or Ohana or whatever, right? Right. All these places. Your fancy place is going to be, or your restaurant for those is going to be Trails End, right? Or whatever they're going to call it. Right. Which is a little weird. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> He said, I, th- I, I think we found our replacement for Reflections at Disney Lake Side Lodge, which <laughs> is what it is. That yeah. is funny. Uh, here's another update. I'm going to sit here and just, I'm going to feel like uh, one of those sites that we do not name. Yeah. I'll just sit here and read you his Twitter feed. Okay, go ahead. Disney says Tron Light Cycle Run will use virtual queue during Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party. Yes, that's actually on the... Um site for Disney too. He says prices went up five bucks. Five mm-hmm. percent. But the ten nights in August and September are the same price as last year. Okay. So the yeah. So the end ones went up. And that's true because I know Christmas party went up from there. Yeah. Okay, back to the cabins. Other updates to the resort will include a proposed pool and walking trail and hand spins, as well as new expanded dining experiences at Trails End Restaurant and Crockett's Tavern. Okay. So it will open in 2024 and would be the 17th Disney Vacation Club Resort. Okay. So, all right, so topics of conversation that I've been involved in today. Remember back when Bob Iger came back? Yeah. On one of those Zoom calls we do on Wednesday nights, Mm -hmm. some of us were saying, I bet they bring back annual passes like right at first of the year because Iger's going to want like this huge cash influx at the end of his first quarter. Right. So instead, the huge cash influx was right at the beginning of the third quarter. (laughs) (laughs) When they put all the annual passes back on sale. Right. They've taken rooms, cash rooms, away from Grand Floridian. Mm -hmm. Originally, they took cash rooms away from Poly, like two buildings worth, at three buildings, whatever it is over there. Right. Right. Turned them into DVC Resort. Right. Turned Grand Floridian's rooms, more rooms into DVC Resort. Mm Mm-hmm. I think it's the same thing they did at Boulder Ridge. Like, those weren't new construction. They were taking cash rooms. Now they're taking the almost $500 a night cabins. Mm -hmm. It's like they're looking for, shockingly, instead of renting out rooms one at a night, get all the money for selling them as DVC stuff. Like, over and over, they're doing this. Yes. It's weird. Not disagreeing. It's weird. I don't exactly know what's going on, but like, it feels weird. Well, I'm wondering if the higher end rooms like that were not selling. No, you can't ever get one. Uh, You mean as far as a cash room? Yeah. Oh, the cabins, yeah. But I'm Polly, I mean, you know, every place around there is sold out all the time, right? I never look at cash rooms. That's why I didn't know. I was just wondering. I was making a speculation. Yeah. That, I mean, that's why they were turning the cash rooms into DVC rooms. I mean, there may be some of that. But anyway, that's there's something going on. Right. That they want cash. Yes. Uh, one other cool thing, breaking news. Spider-Man movies are coming to Disney Plus as soon as tomorrow. <gasps> really? Yeah, on April 21st, Spider-Man 2002, Spider-Man 2, 2004, Spider-Man 3 from 2007, and The Amazing Spider-Man from 2012 are being are coming out. And on May 12th, Spider-Man Homecoming from 2017 and Venom for 2018. 
actually wanted to see those. Yeah. So, um, there you go. News. That's uh, six movies that we can go watch. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Any more breaking news? No, that's all I see. <laughs> I mean, I can sit here for a while and see if he updates his Twitter feed. And he's a very reliable source. Yeah, yeah, he's not. He's not, you know. Those people. He's not the kind of person who you would uh, ironically take a picture in front of the Christmas tree that he sponsored. I'm just saying that. (laughs) Right? If you know, you know. If you know, you know. All right. So I think that's it for news. It is. I mean, there wasn't a lot of news, but there was a lot of big news. Oh, there was the one big thing. So Tony Ann and I were talking earlier. And was this the big announcement Disney was teasing the other day? I just wonder. Well, like they said, there was a big announcement coming up. So was it Mickey's Not So Scary, I guess? I mean, you knew it was coming when they announced halfway to Halloween. Yeah. Right. I mean, you did. Yeah. Because that's. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. All right. So Saturday we went over to Epcot. Mm Mm-hmm. Actually had not been to the park in two weeks, almost, since the third. Right? First, second, third, fourth. I was there the fourth, yeah. Um. So we went <laughs> 11 whole days. <laughs> and by the way, I, it, and I actually want to throw part in there. Remember the whole discussion of how many times people have been to the parks in yeah, I didn't 2020? Idea. I, just I, I actually do have a calendar. I was keeping track of the days I was making reservations. I counted 95 and there's probably some on there that I didn't mark down. It could be. Well, I mean, when they talked about it, Tony Ann said that she thought I was undershooting it, which I'm sure I was. I mean, right. I knew, like, I, that's why I said, I don't know, 50, 75? I don't no, know. I mean, minimum was 95. Yeah. Those so, figures. So we got our money's worth out of our annual pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about 12 bucks a trip. Yeah. Or 12 bucks a day. Yeah. Which is why... Like that one time we went to Epcot and went in and got as far as the Figment store and then went, you know what? Let's go eat at the Turf Club (laughs) and just left. Because it was freezing. Yeah, it was super cold that day. (laughs) It was not fun. It was super windy and cold. Yeah. And we're like, we're done. So we went to Epcot Saturday. Yes, we did. Um. Got there... 11-ish? Yeah, 10.45, something like that. Yeah. actually, Traffic sucked. It was terrible. The whole way over. Um, It actually ended up being not as bad. Like, we got in the car, and I always throw the GPS on because you don't know. Right. And that's just habit. I do it too. You know. And, uh... Immediately, as soon as we got on, like it was a a reasonable amount of time. And then all of a sudden it was two hours as soon as we got on I-4. Right. But then it. And then it ended up being like an hour and 40 minutes. Oh, yeah. Because it dropped down to an hour and a half and then it jumped back up again. Yeah. Then it kept climbing back up again. Right. So, um, but yeah, so I think, I want to say we got there like 1139 or something like that. I mean, 1039. Yeah, that sounds about right. So we went in and we hit creation shop because there was some new hundredth stuff that you had to pick up. Of course. And uh, we went out of there. So it was getting to be lunchtime and we had not eaten all day. Right. So our plan when we went over was that we were going to go eat at the flower and garden booths. Right. Try some of those. Right. Well, some of them had changed their menu, which we knew they were doing. So the first place we went was the Epcot Farmer's Feast. 
which had a grilled vegetable bruschetta with marinated peppers, zucchini, squash, artichokes, goat cheese, and balsamic gray glaze ungrilled ciabatta. But that one didn't look bad. It didn't. I just... Squash and artichokes. Then they had a grilled swordfish and a couple desserts. A dessert and a drink. So we were like, yeah, okay. Uh, then we said, okay, let's run over here in front of uh, Test Track mm-hmm. to Brunch Cot. They still had the avocado toast, shrimp and grits, lox benedict on a everything bagel Mm -hmm. or focaccia and uh, fried cinnamon roll bites. That was a really long line there. Super long. And it was avocado that I can't stand and fish that I don't eat. So we didn't go there either. Right. So we went into... What was the name of it? The Citrus Blossom, I believe. Yeah, the Citrus Blossom. That is in the Odyssey building. Right. Where Epcot, uh, the Epcot Experience. Used to be. Used to be. Mm-hmm. Then you put that back. That, that was, was very cool. That was like an actual attraction. It was super cool. Yes, but this has a lot of tables and chairs in it. Right. Which is nice. Right. And they kind of need that, too. And yes. it mostly has a gift shop in it. Yes. So they had a lot of Orange Bird stuff. Not as much as they did in some of the other places. But they had like, probably everything. You know, spirit jerseys and keychains and right. salt and pepper shakers and all the rest of that. And they have figment stuff in there, too. Um, a little bit. But they yeah. had the flower and garden stuff, which is, I did not know this, but very Snow White. This year. Yes, it is. Um, so they had some cool stuff, like a little terrarium kind of thing mm-hmm. and um, coasters. And they had some really cool flower and garden stuff. Yeah. It was very, it was kind of very, not so flowery and more snow whitey, which was yeah, actually kind of. Yeah, very snow whitey. Yeah. Um, they had Crocs mm-hmm. with, I think, a figment and a snow white. Yeah, that combination was, was a little. Bird and Snow White? I think it was Figment and Snow White. Yes, it was Figment and Snow White, I believe. Um, but it had cool stuff in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got the orange sesame tempura shrimp with orange chili sauce. Yes. All right. Tell me about it. It was, it had a shrimp flavor. It had very little shrimp in it. it had a good flavor. It just didn't have much shrimp in it. <laughs> right. A lot of tempura. <laughs> A lot of tempura, and they were shaped like, you know, tempura fingers, basically. Like chicken, they were like, you know, chicken strips. Yeah, sure. But, I mean, it had flavor. It was just there was not much meat in there. Right. But for, what was it, like $5, $7? Seven, seven, I think. Yeah. Yeah, seven. For seven, I thought I'd get a little more, but it's okay. By the way, just a little okay thing. It's starting to get on my nerves. Yeah. It's been three years. Do you guys really need to keep putting the Disney Dining Plan logo on every one of these menus? Yeah, I know. Like, it's been three years. The Dining Plan that was supposed to come back during the 50th didn't. Like, can we maybe quit pretending at this point? Right. You know, unless the new Disney dining plan is the thing they do for UK residents to get them to come over. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's just getting, eh, you know. Right. Anyway, that's my little pet peeve right now. Um, I got a beer flight. Because um, I don't eat shrimp. Right. And the citrus baked, baked brie with... Preserved lemon marmalade, limoncello macerated blueberries, and spiced Marcona almonds uh, looked good, but it was not what I was looking for. So, um, yeah, we didn't do that. Right. Um, they have another new Orange Bird Sipper Cup. This one's just a little different than the last two. Right. Like the 
He's a little more facing forward than sideways like he used to. Mm-hmm. But I had the beer flight. $10, three, uh, I guess they're four ounce pours, right? I think. I think so. So it came with the UFO Beer Company Citrus Hazy Wheat Beer. The Parish Brewing Company drive Through Orange Octane Imperial Sour. And an 8-1 Bay Brewing Company Citrus Honey Cream Ale. And what did you think of those? Well, first of all, I want to look it up because I thought that that's sour. Oh, it was. Okay, so first thing I thought was um, they're in a different order than what I thought they were. Okay. So I'm glad I looked at my little picture with the card in front of it. Right. Um, The first one, the UFO Beer Company Citrus Hazy Wheat Beer. Right. um, Tasted more like beer than an IPA. Okay. Or even than like Blue Moon, which which is kind of an IPA. Right, I mean, that makes you like happy. IPA. Yeah, I'm not, like, believe it or not, because I bought three orange beers, like, I'm not a huge, give me citrus in my beer fan. Right. Um, I just, I don't know, I like beer-flavored beer. <laughs> I don't know, it just sounds funny. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand what you mean, just when you say it, yeah, it makes me I, giggle. I want beer that tastes like beer. Right. Um... But it was okay. It mm-hmm. honestly didn't have a lot of any kind of taste. Okay. Like, it didn't really taste like beer, but it certainly didn't taste like an IPA or like an orange beer. It just kind of didn't have a lot of any taste. Okay. Um. So, meh. Uh, the 8 One Bay Brewing Company Citrus Honey Cream Ale out of Tampa, Florida, my hometown. Yes. Uh, was okay. It had a citrus and honey taste that was very pleasing okay. to the palate. Well, that's good. Um, it did not have a cream ale aspect to me at all. Right. Uh, and I'll put a picture on Facebook and stuff when I put this out because, um, I don't know, it doesn't look like a cream ale. It looks like a beer. Maybe slightly darker than the average beer, but that could also be lighting and the cardboard box. No, I think it was that color. Yeah. Uh, the Parish Brewing Company drive through Orange Octane Imperial Sour, and that is out of, well, my picture blurred, but somewhere in Louisiana. Right. Uh, the first one, the UFO, is uh, Boston. So the Imperial Sour, that was the big winner, and I've kind of gotten... Now that I've said I like beer-flavored beer, but I have got a thing for sour beers. Oh. I do like those. Okay. Um, they make some really good ones over in Dunedin, like 45 minutes from us. Yes. And, uh, yeah, I, I liked that one. It was good. Like, I would have, it would have been probably better if I'd have paid nine fifty for the 12 ounce of that than $10 for the flight. Well, but you get a flight, that way you can try some different beers. Yeah. Now, I didn't see this anywhere, but I think I want to get this when we go back this weekend. Which is what? The Orange Bird Bundle, featuring the Orange Bird Little Golden Book and a souvenir Orange Bird Sipper Cup. I didn't see that. And I saw the sipper. Yeah, I saw the sipper too. And, um... So you went through the line. I didn't. I went inside to get us a table. And I almost like went back out there to tell you to get it. And then um, you were already through the line. Oh. But I didn't see that. I think I think we need to get that with a little golden book. Those are cute. Okay. And collectible. We can do that. Yeah. Shockingly, so, we're going to be there next week. <laughs> right. And maybe even Saturday. So we, um, so we were still hungry. Well, because we really hadn't eaten anything. <laughs> no, you had like two shrimp or one shrimp. I, I, it was probably one shrimp and those five pieces of tempura. Yeah. 
Uh, yes, there were five. They look like French fries. Yeah. I'm just saying. I know. That's what I'm saying. They're like, you know. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I think you were generous with the shrimp fingers. <laughs> they look like French fries. <laughs> um, but that's where we ran into Travis and Natalie and Marissa. Yes. So that was cool. We hung out with them. I'll bet it was a half hour. Oh, it was probably at least a half hour. And uh, eh, you know what? I, mean, I guess I bet it wasn't. It may have been 15 minutes. It seemed like a half hour. Because after we talked to them, yeah, uh, we went out. We went out to like the Mexico place and the line was crazy. Yeah. And then we. And the menu just kind of, I don't know, for some reason I just suddenly was not feeling it. So they had a quesadilla and a taco. Well, actually, no, that line wasn't crazy. It just didn't, you didn't like the menu. Yeah. They had a taco that was looked okay but it was 875 yeah like you know what you can get a taco bell for 875 um and then they had this quesadilla de flor de la calabaza or de calabaza house made masa tortillas with squash blossoms bacon onion zucchini and cheese that was eight bucks right and it was not big no so um that was when we kind of decided uh yeah, we walked towards Mexico and sat on a bench. And yeah, we did over by the um, the margarita place. Right. And we decided to see what we could get to eat. Right, what was available. What was available around there. Right. So at 20 minutes to noon, right, like primo lunchtime. Right. Coral Reef. This okay, is, that's, that's not cheap. No, and this is for walk-up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's, These are walk-up This lists. is... Available dining now, now, mm-hmm. right? Um, in fact, the biggest hassle we had once we picked a restaurant was it kept telling us we were too far away, right? Um, but Coral Reef was available, Beer Garden was available, right? Um, that place is super good and like always has tables open. What Beer Garden, Beer Garden, yeah, um, Spice Road table. Mm-hmm. which I just wanted food. Like, I didn't want to have to, like, I didn't want small plates. I wanted, like, food. Right. You know. Right. At that point. And, and uh, Garden Grill. Garden Grill was available. And we have never had anything but breakfast dinner at Garden Grill. We've only ever been there for breakfast. Right. So we got excited about that. Yeah, we're like, Plus it was character dining. Yes. So we're trying to join the walk-up list. Now we're in Mexico, right? We're too far away. Too far away. We're at the building, at the land, like just outside, too far away. Mm-hmm. Um, you had to get almost all the way to the escalators before it, uh, like... For you, mine actually did work on, on the ramp, okay. walking down. So that was weird. Like, we've joined walk-ups... We joined Turf Club. We weren't even on property. Yeah. I right? We've joined, um, what was it? Oh, uh, you know what? Turf Club wasn't. Never mind. Turf Club, we ended up not joining the walk-up. We had a we got a reservation for like 25 minutes later. And we weren't on property. Yeah. Um, we've gotten others off like property. I, I know that we've joined the walk-up list for Spice Road Table. And then went, oh, crap. We are like the furthest place in the park yes. from Spice Road Table. We got to run. Yes. Um, that happened at, I guess, Dapper Day last year. Mm-hmm. So now, at least for Garden Grill, we had to get like two Garden Grill before it let us join the walk-up list. Right. Then we waited like five minutes, maybe, right. for him to seat us. Um, so they have Mickey, Pluto, Chip and Dale. Yes. Those are your guests or your uh character mates Mm -hmm. so pretty cool yes um we were seated on the second level when we were seated we were at the kitchen door (laughs) okay so i (laughs) had like five minutes well no we sat down they sat us there i'm like really they put us by the kitchen by the kitchen door yeah and it took me about five minutes to realize that we were moving and we weren't at the kitchen door anymore (laughs) yeah the kitchen doesn't move because, you know, I'm, I'm a dummy sometimes. <laughs> so, all right. So the menu. There was a harvest-inspired garden salad. There were 
rolls of some kind with some kind of butter, and they are not listed on the menu whatsoever, and so I can't tell you exactly what they were. I don't remember. Right. Um, weird that they are not on the menu. There was barbecue roasted chicken with sweet and tangy barbecue sauce. Mm-hmm. Mac and cheese, that came in a bowl. Right. The chicken was in a, like, skillet thing. Mm-hmm. Southern style spoon bread that was in the skillet. Right. Grilled beef with chimichurri in the skillet. Mm -hmm. The rest of this stuff was in the skillet. Creamy mashed potatoes and seasonal vegetables. Seasonal vegetables were green beans. Yes, they were. So everything in the skillet except the mac and cheese that came out in its own bowl. Um, The salad was fantastic. Fresh, mixed greens. Had some uh, ol- for ol- our friend Tony Ann, it was covered in olives. Yes. On the top. I believe green and black. Yes. But they were really flavorful olives. They were. Too. I mean, the whole salad, the dressing, everything was great. Um, they kept trying to take it, and we were like, no, leave it. We're not done with this salad yet. Yeah, I just kept putting my fork in and eating it. Yeah, but it was, uh, so if you are like our friend and you don't like olives, um. Know that going in because it was absolutely covered in on. You know, it's one of those where they throw all the greens in the bowl and then they just lay everything else on top. Right. Right. So it was covered in olives. Um, it was a delicious salad. But it was really, really good. Like, I wish we could have taken it home. Um, the chicken I didn't love. It was good. It was baked chicken with barbecue sauce slathered yeah. on it. Yeah. Like, I didn't love it. It, it was fine. Nothing it was, was fine. bad. No, nothing was bad. I didn't think it was great. No. The mac and cheese was mac and cheese. Yeah. It was very cheesy. Like, yeah. It was very cheesy. Very cheesy. Um, but it was just mac and cheese. Like, there was no special, right. you know, special anything to it. It was just mac and cheese. Right. And look, I mean, Garden Grill is not your exotic menu. It's... It's a character meal. It's a character meal. Great for kids. Right. You know. Uh, the Southern style spoon bread, it was basically cornbread mm-hmm. with corn casserole. Right. Mashed potatoes, green beans. The grilled with, beef with chimichurri was tasty. Yes. The green beans were amazing. They were super fresh. They were the real small green beans, the real thin ones. Yeah. And they were incredibly fresh. And yeah, they just were. delicious. They were. Because when we asked for extra of stuff, because I said, do you want anything else? Green beans. <laughs> yeah, we did. And, I and the ate beef. It, and the beef. And I ate every single one of those green beans. <laughs> so here's what I don't understand about these Disney all-you-can-eat home-style kind of places. Mm-hmm. Every one of them does this. So they bring out the skillet. Right. And it's got two pieces of chicken, three pieces of beef, mm-hmm. half a spoonful of mashed potatoes, a spoonful of corn. Right. And then you go, okay, could we get some more of the beef and, you know, some more mac and cheese? And they right. bring out like 10 pieces of beef. I know. <laughs> the second time. Like we were at uh, Whispering Canyon not long ago and we were like, eh, can we get, you know, more this and this? And they bring out twice as much as they did the first time. I know. it's. I- and they all do it. I don't get it. I don't get it either. Um, so the beef was really good. The green Mm -hmm. beans were really good. The salad was the best thing on the menu. Right. Until. (laughs) Until. Exactly. (laughs) So then she brings out dessert, Mm -hmm. which is included. The berry shortcake. So shortcake with strawberries, blueberries, and blackberries, raspberries. I think it was both. There were three berries. Oh. I think it was raspberries. Definitely strawberries, definitely blueberries. Yes, then it was I think it was raspberries. raspberries. Yes. And covered in whipped cream. And it had a little bit of uh, the juice from the berries on there too. Yeah. That was... Covered in whipped cream. Oh my goodness. It was outstanding. Yeah, it was delicious. So... And it was was not... Yeah, and it wasn't too heavy. Nothing was too heavy. Mm Mm-mm. It was just, it was the perfect ending of the meal. Yeah, it was, definitely. So that was, um, 
like if you could do a la carte, mm-hmm. uh, get the beef, the green beans, the salad, and yep. then load up on that cake. Yeah. Because, eat, I mean, even the, nothing was heavy on that dessert. It was amazing. Mm-mm. Yeah, no, it was great. Um, $55 for adults, 39 $36 for kids, three mm-hmm. to nine. Right. They do give, you do get AP discount. Right. Uh, we had not even, well, I want to say ordered, but we had barely sat at the table. Mm-hmm. And Dale came up and sat down next to me. It was, it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, he just, just sat down at the table. He just pulled up the ch- pulled out the chair and sat down. And we're like, would you like some bread? <laughs> he just made himself at home. It was fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Um, Mickey came by. And, and gave you a big old long, long, long that, hug. That's probably the best hug I've had from a so character. I got maybe half of it on video, and the video is 11 seconds. So yeah. it was like closer to 30 seconds than. Yeah. And, and the cast member not. just kept hugging me. Yeah. And then doing, you know, the whole thing like when you, you know, you kind of rub their shoulder. He was doing that on my shoulder. Right. It was just. He didn't want to let go either. Yeah. Then you had gone to the restroom and he came back by the same Mickey and I happened to be looking at the reel you posted of it. Because I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so cute. I didn't even realize All you right. had posted the reel. And Mickey came back up and started and started to give me another hug. And I, and I realized by the way he hugged me, it was the same Mickey. Yeah. The same cast member. And then I showed him... The real, I mean, he's like, I remember you. That is me. Look, at that's me. He kept pointing to it. And you know, it was just, the interaction was amazing. Yeah, all all the characters that came by, and I think we saw two different Dales. Yeah. I mean, two different friends of Dales. Whatever. Yes, two different friends whatever. of Dales. Whatever. Right. Let's don't pretend. Right. Um, Chip came and sat down at the table, too. Mm-hmm. There's that picture. Yep. Um, they were all really good and really into it better than like most of the places we've been right recently with right. character mates. They were, they were, so, they were really enjoying what they were doing. Yeah. So it was really good. Um, let's compare it. I think Tusker house is better mm-hmm. with the character mate. And I think Beer Garden is a little better, is better for food for a buffet without a character meat. But, right. you know, just restaurants that are like all you can eat that are the same price. Right. Um, but this was good. This was. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I'm I glad. Did, we, I did I'm, too. I'm glad that, you know, I'm glad that we went because we had, you know, we'd always talked about the fact we. I'm only going had, back there. I'm not going to go. I mean, it won't be the last time we go. Right. So. And I'll go back there for it's the it's a place that we have skipped for lunch and dinner mm-hmm. when we you know even when we were on the dining plan because I'm like yeah okay you know it's chicken and beef and I feel like it used to be ham right um but you know we're gonna be at Epcot let's do whatever let's do beer garden or let's do Oscar Oscar shoes or whatever because you know those are different this right. is just kind of food. But um, I'm glad we went. It was good. I am too. It was very good. And it was relaxing and we did an hour and we made the full rotation. Yeah, just past, you know, maybe about an hour and 10 minutes or something. Right. Um, Yeah. And the other thing about Epcot, Mm -hmm. it's it's not a dead end going past uh, Spaceship Earth anymore. I know. We purposely took that walk. one of the walls is down. Yeah. Like I just want to not have to go around. I want yeah, to. Yeah, remember go that one day Dave and I were waiting on you, and we waited up at the top and didn't tell people that they were walking into a dead end. And uh, but the dead end's not there anymore. You can get all the way through to World Showcase now. You're I know, straight ahead. So very cool. Yes. Um, that's all I got for this week. I, that's all I got. Cool. Um, thank you, everyone, again for listening to the episode. Uh, welcome to our new listeners. Welcome back to our regular listeners. Um, on Instagram, we are at 
mickeyfile underscore podcast. Join us on Facebook in our Facebook group, the Mickey File Improvement District. <laughs> um, podcast is available on all the uh, major and minor places. So, like everywhere. Everywhere. Uh, best way to support the show is subscribe, like, follow, thumbs up, whatever it is on your podcatcher of choice. And, uh, you know, as always, share us on social media. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell whoever. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you have any comments, suggestions, any of the rest of that stuff, uh, you want to reach out to us by email, um, Mickey File Podcast, all one word at gmail.com. Goodbye. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.